Order. The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 8604 in the name of John Mason on promoting family recovery across Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. Could I ask our guests who are leaving the gallery to do so quietly please this parliament is in session. I call on John Mason to open the debate. Seven minutes please Mr Mason. Hey, thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and can I also thank uh, members who signed the motion and therefore allowed uh, this debate to go ahead today. Uh, specifically in the motion, uh, we refer to uh, the event on the 21st of November, which from memory was hosted by Ken McIntosh, and uh, I think that shows that there is widespread support for this concept and specifically for this organisation in the ideas we're talking about today. I'm not sure exactly who's got into the gallery so far, but at some stage I do welcome to the gallery uh, Christine Duncan, uh, who is the chief executive of Scottish families affected by drugs and alcohol, uh, and the chair of the organisation, Stevie Lydon. And I think it's largely through Christine's enthusiasm for this work that a number of us have been drawn into some involvement with it. Can I also thank Christine and her colleagues for excellent briefing papers before today's debate, I expect the following speakers may go into more detail about some of the specific issues around alcohol and drugs, for example, naloxone, eh, minimum unit pricing, methadone, or the new psychoactive eh, substances. However, I really wanted to concentrate on the theme of families and their involvement with a member who has an issue with drugs or alcohol. There are a range of organisations doing excellent work in the fields of alcohol and drug dependency. Nationally, we all know about Alcoholic, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and at a Glasgow level, eh, we have the Glasgow Drug Crisis Centre, Turning Point. In the east end of Glasgow, we've had Carlton Athletic in the past and Greater Easter House Alcohol Awareness Project, East End Community Alcohol Support Service, amongst others. Of course, the risk of mentioning individual organisations is that you miss some out, eh, so apologies for almost certainly eh, having done that. But my point would be that there is a lot of good work going on, often with a slightly different emphasis eh, for each organisation, and that happens both in the public sector and in the voluntary sector. Rightly, there is a big emphasis on the individual who has the problem, eh, because obviously it is that individual who primarily needs help, and it is that individual who will have to make certain decisions. However, that is not the whole of the story. Each individual with a drug or alcohol problem has a partner, a parent, a brother, a sister, a child. And these folk too, to a greater or lesser extent, are going to be affected by the addiction, but may well be part of the solution and may certainly want to be part of the solution. And these are folk too who may be suffering physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally because of the substance misuse. As pointed out, in the briefing, this can include psychological distress, mental and physical ill health, negative financial impacts and impact on employment. Now, we have to accept that all families are very different from each other. There may well have been underlying issues within a family which has contributed to the individual getting involved in alcohol or drugs. And there may even have been intergenerational problems so that, in fact, several family members have similar problems. But having said that, there are many, many cases we have heard of, and I think I and other members have actually met many of these families, when the family is having a huge amount of input, caring and helping to provide a stable environment, not to mention actual financial support, and consequently saving the public sector considerable amounts. I think we should also mention at this stage specifically grandparents and other kinship carers who have who are often having brought up their own children are now facing the challenges of bringing up grandchildren or other young relatives, while also trying to support their own children, that is the grandchildren's parents, who perhaps are the ones struggling with alcohol or drugs. Now, we're particularly focusing on Scottish families uh, today, but we also can mention other organisations which emphasise the wider network uh, for example, Al Anon for friends and families of alcoholics. Uh, and only recently, if I myself had some contact with them, uh, meeting uh, with them in Glasgow, and also recently 
I visited Family Addiction Support Services, FAS, in West Street in Glasgow. And I was, have to say I was very impressed uh, by some of the work they were doing. And specifically, one of the issues they were uh, mentioning was how they can support grandparents who are perhaps having to try and relearn the skills of bringing up young children, because obviously society and the way children are brought up is somewhat different these days than it was perhaps 30 years ago. But I have to say I've been very impressed by the ethos of SFAAD, eh, or SFAD. Eh, looking at their website, eh, there's details of the helpline. And then one of the first tabs you come across is supporting yourself. And it says, at Scottish Families, we believe the best way you can help a substance misusing relative is to get support for yourself. Attending a support group, gaining more knowledge and learning relaxation techniques can help you cope. And I was also particularly taken with a section headed, it's not your fault. And this is basically quoting uh, pretty well uh, what it says. Addressing a relative, you, it says, you're not responsible for your loved one's alcohol or drugs misuse. Your relative's alcohol or drugs misuse is not your fault. Family members, especially parents, often experience feelings of guilt and failure, believing that they are somehow to blame. Harboring these feelings can lead family members to behave as though they are responsible for the substance user and their actions. There are many reasons why people use and may go on to become dependent on alcohol or drugs. However, it is the user who is always responsible for their using behaviour. Their decision to stop using alcohol or drugs is their choice and their responsibility. Feelings of guilt and responsibility can be overwhelming and difficult to let go of. Talking about negative feelings with your support network can help you to understand that it is not your fault. It can also be useful to join a family support group to get support from others in similar circumstances. The sooner you try to resolve these feelings, then the easier it will be to set boundaries, talk to your loved one about their alcohol or drug use, and support yourself. I just was, was very challenged by uh, the way that was put. For me, that sums up very well what this is all about and sums up some of the thoughts and feelings that families can have. So again, I want to thank yourself, presiding officer, and fellow members for allowing this debate to happen, and I look forward to hearing other contributions. Thank you. Many thanks. Uh, speeches of four minutes, please. And I call Margaret McCulloch to be followed by Nanette Milne. Thank you, President Officer. In beginning, I would like to congratulate John Mason for securing this debate. In doing so, he has brought an, an important topic to Parliament, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak on this motion today. As we have heard, alcohol and drug problems, particularly addiction, can affect the whole family parents, children, grandparents and partners, but family can also be a tremendous source of support and guidance. People with addiction problems can and do recover. For many people, the support and understanding of family members is invaluable in that process. For some, families have been a safety net. For others, the promise of a healthy family life is sometimes a powerful motivator in beating addiction such as when they want to repair the relationships that drink or drug-fueled behaviour has damaged. For families who are affected by that destructive, even self-destructive behaviour, intervention to support the family and aid recovery is just as important. That is why I am pleased that the Parliament has taken this opportunity to explore the family dimension to recovery and highlight the good work of Scottish families and the extensive network of services and family support groups that operate all across Scotland. In my own region, families can not only make use of the Scottish families affected by drug and alcohol, uh, alcohol and drugs helpline, but they could also benefit from a range of other services. Families Anonymous, Relationship Scotland, Families Outside, Adaction, Coatbridge Family Support Group, Liberate Lanarkshire, the Alcohol Counselling Team in North Lanarkshire, the Community Addiction Team in South Lanarkshire. There is support out there to help families as well as the person close to them who has an alcohol or drug problem. And there is information out there to help families understand how drink or drug fuel behaviour affects them not just the person who is drinking or using. But the briefing paper cited in John Mason's motion does suggest that more work is required. Families have their own needs. 
It is not just about wanting their parent or child or partner to get clean. It is about addressing the impact of drink and drugs on the family as a whole. There is too little information on just how many people are affected by a loved one's habit, but if we accept the estimates in the briefing paper, then we could potentially be talking about 300,000 people in Scotland through drug use alone without taking alcohol into account. Those people who are at risk of stress, anxiety, isolation and maybe even at the risk of physical harm have to be identified and their needs have to be properly assessed. Families and carers affect, affected the misuse of drugs and alcohol deserve a needs assessment and they deserve to be recognised in the government's strategies. At the very least, they deserve not to be overlooked and to have a voice in this parliament. I hope they will feel that we have given them the voice they deserve today and that the changes they want to see have moved a step closer as a result. Thank you. Many thanks. Before I move on, could I just remind our guests in the gallery that there is no photographing or filming of proceedings, please? I call Nanette Millen to be followed by Alison McInnes. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I echo Margaret McCulloch in congratulating John Mason for tabling the motion we are discussing this afternoon? This debate follows on from a debate led by Gordon MacDonald in September of last year, which covered a similar area, namely Al-Anon, the support network offering strength and hope for friends and relatives of alcoholics. Today's discussion focuses on another support network, Scottish families affected by alcohol and drugs, and highlights the event held in Parliament last November entitled Promoting Family Recovery Across Scotland. This highly informative lunchtime session was accompanied by a briefing paper which sits neatly alongside the Scottish Government's strategy, The Road to Recovery. Its emphasis is on the contribution which families can make to their loved ones who have become involved with substance abuse, whether that means attending medical appointments with them or to give them the necessary encouragement to turn their lives around. I also draw members' attention to the Government's strategy for ta tackling alcohol abuse, changing Scotland's relationship with alcohol, a framework for action, which also champions the role played by families in helping their relatives struggling with addiction. At the core of these strategies is a recognition of the difficulties people experience when they see a family member or friend falling apart through drug or alcohol misuse. The impact of this can take many forms, ranging from mental and physical ill health, psychological distress and domestic abuse. There's also the financial burden placed on families or friends who find themselves in debt or acting as cash machines to fund an individual's dr dr drug or drink addiction. And we hear cases of people resorting to theft to pay off the debts of a loved one. That's why organisations such as Scottish Families Affected by Alcohol and Drugs play such an important part in reaching out to individuals and families who are going through such emotionally challenging times. What is less well known is the work this group does in engaging with many prominent Scottish academics and clinicians in analysing the increase in psychiatric illnesses such as anxiety and depression of family members who are affected by alcohol or drug misuse. John Mason's motion makes reference to Grampian. And as a member for the North East, I'd like to reiterate comments I've made in previous debates regarding the work performed by the Grampian Family Support Forum and its founder, Sheila Mackay. Set up as recently as 2010 and funded by the Aberdeenshire Alcohol and Drug Partnership, the Grampian Family Support Forum acts as an umbrella organisation within which local family support groups in Murray, Aberdeenshire and the City of Aberdeen can effectively communicate with one another, all drawing on their own experience to help other families stressed and stigmatised by addiction and striving to get better services for people who are trying to recover from addiction and to regain their lives. Because recovery can and does happen, as we heard during the debate that I was privileged to lead in Conservative time some 18 months ago, when there were many powerful speeches across the chamber recounting constituents' experiences. I particularly remember the remarkable and inspiring story of Jane on her long and very difficult journey from addiction to alcohol and drugs through to abstinence, and now able to use her experience to give professional counselling to other victims of addiction and their families as they try to follow her path to recovery. There are many such inspirational stories, all very moving, and all indicating that the contribution from families is continuous, arduous and extremely stressful, but critically important if sustained recovery is to be achieved. I believe, presiding officer, that we can't discuss issues like these too often, 
and that we must continue to champion groups and individuals who use their experience to support other families whose lives are blighted by the pernicious nature of drug and alcohol addiction. I would commend John Mason once again for, for, drawing, or for drawing attention once again uh, the invaluable and courageous efforts of these people to the attention of Parliament. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Alison McInnes to be followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I extend my thanks to John Mason for securing this important debate. We, um, we have heard how family, friends and carers can make a unique contribution in aiding the assessment and sustained recovery of those affected by substance abuse, how they can provide a source of care and support in their community. But there is no doubt that contending with a loved one's addiction and the chaotic or intense lifestyle that can accompany that can be overwhelming and place an enormous strain upon relationships. Family members can feel drained, lonely, stigmatised, guilty and most definitely stressed. They are at an increased risk of abuse and ill health themselves. And in the case of children, it can impact upon their educational attainment, their life choices and increase the risk of their, their themselves developing substance abuse problems. And of course, sadly, for hundreds of families each year, bereavement poses further challenges. And that is why we must do all we can to minimise such impacts, adopt an inclusive approach to recovery, and focus on removing any obstacles that discourage or prevent families from getting the assistance that they desire. And for a decade, Scottish families affected by drugs provided assistance and effectively raised awareness of their needs. And I applaud the fact that last year it extended its remit to encompass those struggling with alcohol. And I welcome the news that it is further expanding the breadth and depths of its services with a new family support development officer in the North East in my region and initiatives such as online family support groups. In my region, this work is complemented by organisations such as the Grampian Family Support Forum, mentioned by Nanette Millen, formed in 2010 by concerned parents. It has already established itself as a voice for the thousands of people affected by a loved one's drugs misuse, promoting family support groups and the benefits of mutual peer support. The chair and a founding member of the forum, Sheila Mackay, told this parliament at Time for Reflection in March 2012, and I quote, we want to use our lived experience to make positive changes within our communities. Why? Because when you're qualified to speak, people listen. Well, I believe in empowering such recovery networks. We must establish local services designed to meet local needs, directed by local people. Presiding officer, many of Scotland's prisoners are battling addiction. 40% are likely to have an alcohol problem. Two thirds test positive for illegal drug use on a mission to prison. So I wonder, given the clear links between these circumstances, whether there could be further collaboration between those organisations assisting families with loved ones in prison and those dealing with addiction. To what extent do formal through care arrangements exist to stop families falling between the cracks upon an offender's release? Um, perhaps the Minister can shed some light on this for me when she sums up. The nature of Scotland's relationship with these substances can only be changed through significant social and cultural change. Early intervention and education are of course key, but in the meantime we can work with volunteers and professionals to further develop the capacity required to help those recovering from addiction and those contending with the consequences of this harm. Parents, grandparents and siblings are among those most at risk of further harm, but are also often best placed to influence the course of their loved one's addiction, to give insight, to improve outcomes and to limit the impact upon other vulnerable family members. Investing in a whole family approach to the delivery of recovery services demonstrates that they are a fundamental part of the solution and not an afterthought. Many thanks. And I now call David Torrens to be followed by Ken McIntosh. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank John Mason for addressing the issue of families who are affected by alcohol, drugs and other substance misuse. An extremely high rate of people addicted to alcohol and drugs in Scotland is crucial to tackle all aspects related to substance misuse. One such aspect is supporting the family members of those affected. Most of you will be familiar with the briefing paper on promoting family recovery issued by the Scottish Government. It provides a framework for effective recovery measures. However, recovery is a broad concept. An effective recovery involves supporting the clients who seek help, 
but effective recovery measures also need to consider the importance of a client's social environment, be it a partner, family or friends. They all play a crucial role during the process of recovery. We need to recognise that not only by taking into account all aspects related to reducing substance misuse can progress be made in lowering the number of those involved in this. Today, I want to raise awareness of the issue of those related to a problem of drug users. Developing family support is a necessary step. However, we tend to forget about relatives and friends who suffer due to the intensive effects that addiction often causes. It is essential to provide them with the protection and support needed, which will help them deal with the consequences of having a person with problem drug use in their family. Currently, around 52,000 Scots are suffering from alcohol and drug addictions. Unfortunately, some people who witness a parent misusing in their childhood often carry a burden of the family member misusing throughout their life. In Scotland, the number is estimated to lie between 40,000 to 60,000 affected children. The devastating impact such an experience has on a child's life is indisputable. Negative outcomes associated with parent drug abuse include decreased well-being, and difficulties in achieving full edu educational potential, which could create obstacles for future employment. Additionally, affected children are often exposed to a higher risk of emotional and physical abuse. Statistical data collected within the Fife region indicates that alcohol and drug misuse is slightly lower than the Scottish average. This does not mean that we do not face the same challenges as the rest of the country. People in Fife have recognised the urgency of reducing alcohol and substance misuse and are particularly keen on reducing the profound impact alcohol and substance abuse has on so many lives. In 2009, the Alcohol and Drug Partnership was established in Fife. This partnership intends to improve community planning between the local government, NH5, and third sector organisations. The strategy includes identif identifying protecting those most likely to be affected by substance misuse of others, and it aims to increase the number of services which create a safer and more supportive home environment for those vulnerable target groups. Between 2013-14, 179,000 has been allocated towards achieving this goal. Due to the funding made available in 2012-13, 37 children from 19 families received counselling and were able to take part in various programmes. The figures report that through individual and group sessions, the impact of parent substance abuse on children was clearly reduced, and parenting skills as well as family relationships were improved. I want to use this opportunity today to highlight two organisations which receive funding from Fife Alcohol and Drug Partnerships: Drug and Alcohol Partnership Limited (DAPO) and Fife Alcohol Support Services (FAS). These organisations provide an invaluable service in helping to support people who have been affected in some way by alcohol, drug, or other substance misuse. Since 1994, DAPO supports people in Fife with alcohol, drug and solvent misuse issues. In 2013, DAPO started a summer programme for young people and their family members that turned out to be extremely successful. Key goals of the programme are reinforcing family engagement and positive parenting. The Fife Alcohol Support Service, which is based in Kirkcaldy, offers counselling services to those affected by heavy alcohol consumption. In 2012-13, the organisation offered counselling sessions to 301 clients with the aim of addressing all problems that arise due to alcohol abuse. Including this number are several family members and friends who are seeking help about the drinking of someone in their social environment. Most of these individuals who received counselling responded to the sessions remarkably positively and felt that their physical well-being had significantly improved. Even though a large number of charitable organisations are now well established in Fife, and cooperating with local government and NHS through a drug and alcohol partnership, there are still too many people suffering from the devastating effects of alcohol and drug abuse. As mentioned, children are especially vulnerable. And I think all of us will agree that no child deserves to be hindered in developing his or her full potential. The aim of the future is to identify and support each and every child who suffers from parental drug misuse and provide them with a service that meets their needs to ensure that they grow up in a safe home environment. I commend the dedicated work of DAPO and of Fife Alcohol Support Services, which I believe are truly beneficial services to my, many of my constituents. I would also like to praise all other organisations who dedicate themselves to providing such a valuable support services in Fife and throughout Scotland. I hope that these initiatives will be able to successfully continue their support services in the future to all those affected directly or indirectly by substance misuse. Thank you. I now call Ken McIntosh. Thank you, President Officer. And can I begin, as other members have, by thanking John Mason uh, for bringing forward today's debate and for his opening speech. 
Uh, and as Mr Mason mentioned, I was indeed delighted to host a parliamentary reception for Scottish families against drugs and alcohol uh, in November and allowed us the opportunity to hear from those in the front line who are dealing with uh, families affected by drug and alcohol abuse. The Chief Executive of Scottish Families, Christine Duncan, spoke at that event and again at time for reflection on the 4th of February, very movingly about the stigma that society attaches to addiction, the lack of sympathy and understanding, uh, not just for the individual but for their families too, and indeed the allocation of blame that is often uh, expressed. I think John Mason talked about the guilt that is felt in Annette Millen, talked about anxiety, and it is that issue or those issues, the wider repercussions for the families and the communities affected that makes today these debates so important. And before I move on to family recovery itself, I want to just highlight the grim reality uh, of the trend, the increased trend in alcohol and drug-related deaths in Scotland. In 1992, there were 153 drug-related deaths. By 2012, that number was 581. 30 years ago, 572 people died in alcohol-related circumstances. But by 2012, that number had almost doubled to 1,000. And 80. Now, I mention these statistics to highlight that this isn't a problem that's going away. Although there have been some limited reductions in recent years, the long-term trend is an increase in deaths. Scottish families highlighted one other statistic which caught my eye. The majority of drug-related deaths happen at home. Now, this makes the role of family members not just crucial in the recovery process, but in creating an environment where there can be an early intervention to prevent the drug taking and potentially save a life. And of course, as members have pointed out, Scottish Families is not just a policy-making organisation. First and foremost, it provides practical help to those directly affected. At November's event, we heard from some of the mothers and grandmothers in Aberdeen who had formed a network of support for each other. Uh, in Eastern Bartonshire, Claire Wadsworth from Scottish Families spoke to us and described very powerfully how she had brought together the parents, wives, husband and even children uh, of drug and alcohol users who found it of immediate benefit. If we are to permanently change Scotland's relationship with alcohol and drugs, we need to look to family interventions at an early stage to support people into treatment programmes and to support families afterwards. In fact, early intervention with families will not only reduce the number of needless deaths, it could free up many of the acute services that are often called upon at times of crisis. Studies show that preventative spend in family support services pays huge dividends in reducing demand on health services. I think John Mason pointed out in his motion that up to half a dozen other people within the family are directly affected or indirectly affected by drug and alcohol misuse. The UK Drug Policy Commission estimates that the cost of the harm to family members in Scotland runs to about £229 million per year. And the value of the support they provide would cost around £95 million to replace. I think few of us think in purely financial terms about the impact of those interventions, but the figures are quite striking. So what more can we do? We need to promote far more widely the evidence that does exist so that those involved appreciate the benefits of involving family members at each stage of the recovery process. We should and could be using the health advertising spend to expand knowledge and reduce stigma. And there needs to be far better integration of specialist and generic rehabilitation services to increase the opportunities for family members to be engaged in the process. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government has done much to support this work and I recognise those efforts today. In spite of this, Scotland continues to battle with drug and alcohol abuse. If we are to make a fundamental difference, part of the answer must lie in supporting family and not just individual recovery. Thank you. Many thanks. I now invite Rosanna Cunningham to respond to the debate minister in around seven minutes. Please. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. Could I uh, thank members for their thoughtful contributions and I would have expected uh, no less uh, given the subject matter of this debate, but I do think it confirms that this parliament continues to recognise the needs of families and is committed to supporting and promoting family recovery uh, across Scotland. Um, uh, I, uh, as a member of this government, want to restate this government's commitment to families. We will continue to listen uh, to support and to work with families, and we're going to do this uh, through a number of different ways, uh, through the uh, commitment to faster access to treatment and support, which we have made big uh, strides in, uh, through a sustained record investment in frontline drug services, through a drive to improve service quality, including through our response to the independent expert group on opiate replacement therapies, and a commitment to grow recovery across Scotland. 
And we, of course, also fund voluntary organisations like SFAD, uh, funding this government uh, increase to enable SFAD uh, uh, to work with families affected by both drugs and alcohol, this new uh, role that it has now taken on board. Um, we're also committed to supporting vulnerable children and their families uh, and did, of course, recently publish updated good practice guidance, getting our priorities right for all agencies and practitioners working with children, young people and families affected by alcohol and drugs. And this ensures that local partners have robust risk assessment procedures in place where children are at risk because, of course, this is a partnership across a wide uh, variety of different uh, services. And we continue to work in partnership with Lloyd's TSB Foundation Partnership Drugs Initiative to support families directly. And like many of you, I was pleased to attend the successful event in Parliament last November, convened by Ken McIntosh, where SFAD presented their briefing paper promoting family recovery. And uh, uh, Ken McIntosh today has spoken eloquently of the impact of death uh, uh, on families. I'll say a little bit about that, uh, about that later. But I think uh, we do need to remind ourselves that the Scottish Drugs Forum does provide uh, critical incident and naloxone training uh, um, uh, to, to, to make it uh, uh, available to families teaching them how to respond in an overdose situation and, if naloxone is available, how to use that. And, of course, as a government, we continue to encourage family members and friends to participate in that training. So I think that's important that that is available because uh, Ken McIntosh is right to highlight the impact of a death uh, and the enormous uh, 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 negative consequences that has within a family. Um, the paper... Uh, uh, which SFAD produced, uh, acknowledged that every person with a drug problem is part of a family. It reminds us that families cope with their family members' addiction every single day. Uh, it's not something they dip in and out of. They have to manage this every single day. And I'm sure there's not one of us who has not been moved by the experiences of families affected by drugs uh, or alcohol. And John Mason is right to highlight the many different groups that are now working in this general area. When meeting families from across Scotland like him, I am always profoundly inspired by their resilience and their commitment to both their family and the potential of their family members to recover. But I'm also inspired by their willingness to share their experiences and by so doing help others who are going through difficult times as well. As Alison McInnes reminded us, we should also remember, and we've talked about the deaths so far, uh, the families who've already experienced bereavement and yet still go out there to help others. Um, uh, bereavement as a consequence of addiction in their own family uh, and continue to build our awareness of the needs of families in that situation. Families need support too. The value of national organisations and local support groups to families is vital and I'm glad this is recognised by the Chamber. Organisations like SFAD continue to offer advice and support and, as I've already said, bring people together to share and learn from experiences of supporting the family unit through the recovery journey. A family recovery is being positively promoted and supported right across Scotland. SFAD are currently working with around 70 family support groups and it's encouraging to hear that two new groups offering support to families are starting up every single month. In Grampian, SFAD and Strada are providing family-inclusive practice training to the local workforce, uh, while the Grampian Family Support Forum are supporting local family groups in their development. And understandably, Nanette Milne spent much of her speech outlining the various groups uh, uh, the, in the Grampian area. In Eastern Bartonshire, the family support group started by SFAD is now well established, uh, so much so that SFAD are currently developing a second one in the area. So success begets success. Margaret McCulloch listed just some of the very local groups involved in her own area, as did David Torrance regarding Fife, and other members will have similar lists uh, from their own areas. Family experiences are also central in raising awareness of new drug trends, which of course we debated in this chamber uh, very recently. And the work of SFAD continues to be central in informing our work on new psychoactive substances at a national level. So people should see this as a two-way process as well. They, they inform us. Uh, uh, um, uh, and, and help us um, and give us guidance too. Uh, alcohol and drug partnerships across Scotland also play a key role in supporting families and individuals in their recovery 
as part of their local packages of action to address drug and alcohol problems. And by working together, the nationally commissioned organisations like ESFAD, the Recovery Consortium, Scottish Drugs Forum and Scottish Training on Drugs and Alcohol can focus on understanding and sharing lived experiences of recovery, as well as tackling stigma, which I think uh, Ken McIntosh and one or two other members have also mentioned, which is one of the greatest challenges faced by families. I, I think Alison McInnes raised a particular point uh, around the question of joining up service delivery, uh, particularly uh, for people coming out of prison. She will be happy to know that uh, uh, the Cabinet Secretary recently set up a joint ministerial group on offender reintegration. Uh, I am a member, as are other, uh, our other ministers, and it was brought into being precisely for the reasons she outlined, to begin to see uh, issues right across uh, different uh, ministerial for portfolios. Uh, and building on the commitments that we made at the members' debate on families convened by uh, Nanette Milne in 2012, and I haven't forgotten that she uh, was very keen at that point uh, to discuss it, uh, let us recommit today as a parliament to continue to listen to families who need support, to support the family unit as a whole, to do all we can to tackle stigma and support and promote recovery, and to ensure that valuable examples of good work continue to be shared and learned from. And finally, could I thank John Mason for today's debate, helping to ensure that this very important issue Issue, continues to be on the agenda of this Parliament and also Christine Duncan and SFAD for their ongoing commitment to both supporting families and raising awareness of the issues that affect them. Thank you. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes John Mason's debate on promoting family recovery across Scotland. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2 p.m.